All right, guys. As we talked about it before, introducing Mr. Brian Hoke. You see him on MOB.com. You see him all over the place. Uh, co-producing silently, a silent co-producer of the Penny Two Cents. You know, <laughs> want to go ahead and talk about that. Uh, author and co-author of many books and another one to come as well. Uh, Mr. Brian Hoke. Thank you. you. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the Fisher Strong Podcast. Welcome. Welcome. Wow. Yeah, my debut. It's about time, right? <laughs> about time. I've been ducking you guys, I guess. No, <laughs> this is the first time you asked. So, yeah, I jumped yeah, at it. Too. <laughs> There's been a lot of hinting and like dropping. I'm like, hey, we should have you. Like, yeah, sure. And then we're like, hey, you know what? Let's let's do this. So there you go. And we, uh, we we did this here. So how's everything going with you? Good. Yeah, it's good that uh, the Yankees are giving us some uh, stuff to talk about here. You know, it was such a slow off season. I felt like every week I was just waiting and waiting and waiting for DJ LeMahieu, and then. Finally, that's done, and it all came at once. You got DJ off the board, and then they uh, signed Corey Kluber, and then they made this trade for Jameson Tayo, and then Adovino goes to Boston. It's just been – this has been more Yankee-like, I guess. This is what I yeah. expected the whole offseason was going to be like, and, um, you know, I guess looking back, uh, the two months of quiet were nice, kind of, but not really because <laughs> I want stuff to happen, you know? Yeah, right. We do. It's, it, it's kind of strange just because um, – you know, and I know you. I, I know you've been on the beat for a while. You know, it's been a long time. I, I don't know how how it has changed or it's been like this. I don't know if every season it feels like a, uh, like off season it feels like a, like a renewal. Like, hey, is every year kind of like this? But then <laughs> I'm reminded, you know, every year, hey, it's kind of not. It kind of changes. So how, how mm -hmm. have you been dealing with that every year? And then you, know, you got to put up some kind of work and stories, and <laughs> people invite you on to try to figure things out for them as well. So how's that been going? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, it, I always forget, you know, it's it's like as soon as the postseason's over, it's kind of like, oh, wait, what do I do now? And then it takes a, a little bit to get back into it and get that rhythm of, of making the calls and, you know, making sending the text messages, because that's the thing in normal times when it's not COVID. Uh, the, the great thing about the season is, you know, where everybody's going to be on that day so if i want to go talk to aaron judge i don't have to text him i don't have to go through an agent or whatever to you know, to kind of get that i know he's going to be at his locker four hours before game time and i can go and take a crack at him you know and so obviously awesome. covid took that all away uh this year and um so the, the off season has been weird too in that because the winter meetings are usually such a big part of the off season everybody looks at that and it's like all right you got to get your deals done by the winter meetings and um, the winter meetings didn't matter this year because they're all just going over text and zoom and whatever. And so uh, they still held it, but it was really just kind of a ceremonial day on the calendar. And um, clearly some deals did get done, but um, I, I felt that that was kind of artificial. So I can't wait for the world to go back to normal for about a billion reasons, but it'll <laughs> give right. some sanity to the off season uh, calendar. I, I think that next year we should probably have a more normal off season, but then again, CBA is coming too, so uh, maybe it won't be. I don't know. CBA. Indeed. That's a dirty word. We shouldn't even talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to go there yet because um, there's going to come a time where uh, we're podcasting and you'll be writing and you'll be podcasting too, talking a lot about that. But it just made me think of something, um, you know, because last year we saw the labor negotiations. We all watched them play out on Twitter and the back and forth. And now – Heading into this spring training, we I, I love your spring training content. We've obviously uh, watched you for years, and we were just Thank talking um, before you came on about what you do with the players and the interviews and, like, through the fence and, like, you know, part of spring training starting <laughs> every year, we know you're going to be down there first, and you're going to be having that, like, inside look. Now, talking about the CBA stuff and the negotiations this week, we saw that uh, there was a letter sent about the Cactus League being delayed and Arizona, you know, spring training not starting on time. What are you hearing around that? And I'm, I'm guessing that it's completely independent from Tampa. Mm -hmm. But what are you hearing about right. spring training starting? Because Monday, it's February, and we're all baseball people. We all have a countdown to when pitchers and catchers start, and I'm expecting that to start on time. I am too. <laughs> I'm counting down to until somebody tells me differently. 
I'm counting down to February 15. I mean, there's already guys. I'm in Tampa, so uh, there's already guys down here. I mean, Judge is here. Mike Ford is here. Gary Sanchez awesome. is here. Luke Voigt is here. So the guys are are getting ready over at the, the minor league complex. They're already taking their early BP and stuff, and they're proceeding as though pitchers and catchers will be on the 15th. And, um, you know, I, I know what the Cactus League thing is, obviously, and that's a whole other can of worms there. But what I'll tell you is, Super Bowl is going to happen. It's going to be at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. That's right across the street. They're going to have 22,000 people there. If that's the case, I see no reason why you can't have the Yankees pitchers and catchers on the field in an empty ballpark to get ready for spring training. So, um, you know, I'm kind of using it off that what if Florida's doing that for the Super Bowl, then okay, it's all systems go. That's that's yeah, music to Keith. To me. <laughs> that's music to Keith's ears. Uh. <laughs> I've been talking that the last two weeks, man. I'm like, it's right across the street. How perfect is that, right? Yeah. The Super Bowl could have been anywhere this year, but the Super Bowl is in Tampa. And not to talk football, of course, Tom Brady's in it, first time ever. The home team gets to host the Super Bowl. But for us as Yankee fans, we all know Raymond James Stadium is right across the street from George M. Steinbrenner Field. So if they're a go on February, whatever. Uh, a week before us, then we should be fine, you know? Definitely. I agree. I think so. I mean, you sold me. So, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, it's going to be a different kind of spring training uh, than anything we've seen before. I think that it's probably going to look a lot like summer camp did last year when they restarted at Yankee Stadium. And, like, I don't even know what that means for me yet. Like, you know, we're two weeks out, and I don't know what kind of access I'm going to get or if I'm going to – be in the ballpark or not. I hope so. Uh, I'd like to be, obviously. You will be, you um, will be, you will be, you will be. I, I you better will be. be. <laughs> I want to be. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if they're going to be fans there or what. Like, We will so be, we will be, we will be, we will oh, be. Good. Um, there's so many unknowns still at this point. So, like, I'm, I'm just kind of guessing. But, you know, just based on, hey, if they can do football, then they can do baseball, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, now, Brian, talking about spring training, uh, you know, there's always the chatter. There's always talk. Uh, who are the Yankees excited to see in spring training, if if there is one or two? Who are the Yankees excited to see, like, yeah, like on the, front, the team? Yeah, like the on the front office. You know, anybody that they're interested in seeing. Uh, maybe somebody from the minors, being that there's no minor league uh, games last season. Right. Uh, anybody they uh, they're looking, uh, you know, take a look at, see. Uh, well, I think it's such a, a. I guess that you got two really big question marks in the rotation. You got to keep eyes on Corey Kluber and Jamison Tyon right now, but. Uh, just in terms of prospects, one of the names I keep hearing from coaches, and they keep talking about Nick Nelson. And we got to see Nick a little bit at the big league level last year. He had one really rough outing that skewed his numbers, and um, he didn't really get a chance to show what he could do. But they are so high on him, and I think that if I got to pick one guy who's like a dark horse to make the bullpen – um, I think he could step in there and probably get some important innings kind of, you know, maybe where um, they uh, in those middle innings where they had Jonathan Holder last year. I feel like he could probably slide into that role and, and be that guy. Um, he's going to get every chance in spring training, I think, because they really like him. Yeah, he definitely got more chances in Ottawa towards the end there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And that told you that told you everything you needed right. to know about where Ottavino was on the, the pecking order. And so, um, yeah, when. I couldn't believe they got that right. deal done and got Boston to eat most of that money. That That's crazy. Um, because, I don't, you know, I mean, yeah, he's good, but he doesn't put Boston over the top in any way. Like, he's not right. going to help Boston win the World Series this year. They're not a World Series team. So, I don't I don't get that one. But right. I'm sure Brian Cashman was like, cool, you'll do it. I'm in. <laughs> For a player to be named later or cash considerations. Yeah, I don't yeah which is I like don't nothing. Know. It might be right. you. Who knows? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That would I'll make that the deal worth no it. Offense to, no offense to the guy, whoever it winds up being, but I think the Yankees don't really care who it is. Yeah, I'll get I'll get the call tomorrow, maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. just wondering, like, how did that? That's so weird to me because the first thing that I see when I seen Lindsay Adler tweet that, and I seen the Red Sox, mm-hmm. all I said, or I messaged her right away. I said, "Did you get hacked?" And she's like, <laughs> "No, I'll never forgive you for this." And I'm like, "No, I mean, like, it's the Red Sox. It's kind of weird." So yeah. I've never seen him. I never like. I mean, Stephen Drew is what I remember, right? Is it right? Kelly point? Johnson for Stephen Drew. That was a trade right. deadline in 2014. I remember that one. So right. I think mm-hmm. that they would they, they would help out like that, but it's, it's pretty strange. But and that deal, um, by the way, did not put either team over the top for a World right. Series either. At all. <laughs> At all. At all. Um, but I, I did want to know because I know you mentioned spring training, and you know we're almost 15 days away or so. Eh, 15. 
scene 17 days away and we still kind of don't know what's going on and then you have a new book that's supposed to be coming out later on this year right they, they yeah. brought zoom which i looked at and i said you know i'm kind of kind of interested in that trying, trying to find out how different this year must have been not only for you but just for the players or just the whole atmosphere so i don't know if you could tell us a little bit more about that about how basically the whole dynamic change and must have been even harder for you to do your job just trying to talk to people through zoom calls all day yeah, I'm kind of zoomed out to be honest with you. <laughs> I'd love to. Sorry. Yeah, not, not, this is this is fun. Um, I, I'm good with this. Uh, but yeah, it, it, the Bronx Zoom. I, I thought that chronicling that weird season, and that's what we call it. We call it the Yankees' most bizarre season. And mm -hmm. so I was working on the book as once we uh, got through summer camp and they actually started playing regular season games. I was like, all right, there might be a book here. And then so I started keeping notes and obviously talking to everybody just as you know, as part of my job. And then later, you know, we were kind of hoping this season would go a little longer than it did, but we got what we got and they were bounced by Tampa Bay. And so after that, I gave the guys kind of a little down. I didn't bother anybody for about a month. And then I started hitting people up and saying, Hey, are you ready to talk about what that was? Because I knew at the end of that year, I was just gassed. I like, I wanted it to be over. I, I, that was and Zach Britton said this to me too. He said that was probably the least fun season I've ever had, and be, just because in Zach's case, um, you know, he said goodbye to his family in July, and he didn't see them again until they lost to Tampa Bay in October. And so, um, especially for the guys who were married and had families at home, I think that was really hard. Plus, you throw on top of it all the kind of restrictions, all the the COVID stuff that they had to go through, and plus, I mean. And this is all covered in the book. It's a baseball season happening in the middle of a pandemic where baseball is completely upside down. It's a 60 mm -hmm. game season. Like it's just a weird year. Plus you've got um, the black lives matter stuff going on. There's, there's racial tension. Um, the Yankees obviously kneeling for, for that stuff. That's all part of it. Um, there's this crazy presidential race going on. So you put all that, like throw that all in a pot and try to play baseball through it. It, it was just a wild, like nuts season. And, um, you know, getting to kind of peel back some of the layers of the onion and um, talk to guys and be like, so wait, 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 what was this like staying in this hotel here? And what was happening? Like, remember when they were in Philadelphia and they were waiting to play the Phillies and then everybody on the Marlins got COVID and then the Yankees mm -hmm. were just sitting there in that hotel in Philadelphia wondering what the hell to do. And then eventually they wound up getting on a bus and going to Baltimore and playing the Orioles and just changing the entire schedule. It was crazy. And it was stuff that like, we all lived it. Like you, you and I watched it. And so like, it seems normal ish, I guess. But like, if I told you two years ago that all that was going to happen, like you never would have, and you play in an empty ballpark, by the way, right. nobody will be allowed in the stadium the entire year. Um, it was just kind of nuts. And, uh, obviously, I was one of the few people who was allowed in to watch these games, and um, it kind of sucked, <laughs> to be honest with you. It sucked being an empty Yankee stadium. Um, it, it was just – it felt like um, the Walking Dead, like the apocalypse had hit. And you walk in, and just Yankee stadiums abandoned. And, well, oh, wait, the Yankees are on the field. They're going to play tonight. It, it was just really bizarre. And so hopefully the book captures a lot of that. I got a lot of uh, – Good stuff from behind the scenes with guys just trying to figure out what the heck happened in 2020. Yeah, I can't wait to read that because it's on TV. Well, like when it came on TV and I'm watching it on TV, I'm like, okay, this is kind of normal. But one, not being able to go to the stadium, and you probably know I live there. You know, I live like at <laughs> home, uh, like I'm paying rent at Yankee Stadium. But it just it just feels like so different, you know. So um, I can't wait to to see that be chronicled in a book, you know, because I read the other book as well. Uh, the baby bombers. Which oh, thanks. Said, uh, that was awesome. Which I, I'm still. Yeah, I don't want to be a time. complete downer <laughs> about it. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, it, it was. It's a different book than the other two I've written, just because it was a completely different year. But I don't want to be a complete downer about it. Like there was a, there was some fun stuff going on that year too. Like one of the things about that is because they couldn't go out on the road, say they had to be a much closer unit than probably any other Yankee team in history. Like they even set up rooms in the hotels when they're on the room on the road, like they could play pop a shot together, table tennis. Like Brett Gardner was like the hustler in table tennis. Like <laughs> nobody wanted to play against Gardy because he was just <laughs> kicking everybody's butt. And so um, yeah, some of that behind the scenes stuff um, was really cool to get into. And just, I mean, what do you do when you're a team of 26 guys, 28 guys and, 
you're stuck in a hotel together and you can't even really go to Starbucks or anything. Like, right. so they spent a lot of time together. And the good thing about this team was um, it, it's a bunch of good guys. Like, I don't think that there was any, there was any kind of, Oh, I hate that guy. Like, I don't want to see that guy around. Like, Oh, he better not be at the coffee machine or whatever. Um, <laughs> they, they, this was a team that was close knit already. So mm -hmm. I think that that probably benefited them and um, that they went in with that championship mentality and they were trying to win the world series, even if it was a 60 game weird upside down season. Now that that's significant that you mentioned that, you know, they had to spend more time together, obviously because of uh, COVID and all that. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, DJ said uh, during the press conference, uh, obviously you were there. We'll talk, we'll touch on it more now. Um, he said that I wanted to be a Yankee, but I wanted to be part of this group more like specifically. Right. Uh, so, so that's, that's, you know, you, you said that and it's, you know, it, it came out there. So that's pretty cool actually to know that. How was that today? Can you share anything? Cause we thought we were going to be able to stream it. We thought we were going to be able to watch it on like, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Network or <laughs> Facebook live. And then when the time yeah. came, it's like, Fox no, sports. <laughs> this, is, this is for the media. You guys are, are kind of media, but you don't get access to this. So huh. how was that today? I'm not today? sure why that is. Yeah, I, I <laughs> could have used you guys on there. That would have been fun. Um, yeah, I mean, DJ was happy to be back. Um, I think that he was a little frustrated with just how long it took, you know, because he made it clear. He said, I want to stay in New York. And the Yankees said, you're our first priority. You're our top priority. And so it's, it's like, well, why didn't that get done in two weeks? But it's, <laughs> right. it went four weeks and six weeks and eight weeks and 10 weeks. It's like, I mean, it, this is a weird year and I keep using the word weird, but um, you know, it, baseball is uncertain right now, just in mm -hmm. terms of, we don't know for sure that they're going to play 162. We don't know for sure when or how many fans are going to be in um, or if they're going to be in at all on opening day. I hope they will. I think they will, but I can't tell you that hundred percent. So I think teams were kind of, uh, pumping the brakes a little bit before getting all these deals done. And um, so, but DJ was going to get paid. I wasn't worried about that. I figured he was going to get his money and it just made too much sense for mm -hmm. the Yankees and DJ not to continue that. I mean, he's been their best player for two years and uh, right. you can't make the case to me that the Yankees would have been better anyhow without <laughs> best players. So right. um, no, this is a team ready to win now and DJ is going to help him get there. And so, um, yeah, he's just excited about that. He, he was, he, Interestingly, the first thing he said to us wasn't even about himself. It was about uh, being kind of disappointed that Masahiro Tanaka is going to go back to Japan. And he's not going to get to play with Tanaka anymore, and he's going to miss Adovino too. He was a longtime teammate with Adovino. But I think you're going to hear that from a lot of guys in that clubhouse, that um, Tanaka meant a lot to that team uh, behind the scenes over seven years. And, um, you know, I think that guys really respected him. I think he was one of their favorite teammates. So I think they're going to miss that personality. And, and that presence being around, I mean, you, you got a big game. Um, I, I trust Masahiro Tanaka with the ball. And so um, good for him though, going, getting to go home. Yeah. End of an era, man. End of an era, not having Tanaka in our staff, not being able to hand him the ball, like you said, in the postseason. And uh, now we really got to find a new identity because Garrett Cole's first year was a 60 game season. We still got to get 162 out of him. We're rolling the dice with Kluber and, uh, Jamison Tyone, and we're really just hoping the rest of the rotation uh, rounds into form. Um, what if you had to bet? Like, give us this is probably a tough question, but Cole is number one. Can you yeah. give us a two, three, maybe a four, maybe a five? If you had to guess sure. right now, I can give it to you. That doesn't mean it's going to be right. But <laughs> well, um, you're on the I, record now, so let's right. hear it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm all in. I think Garrett Cole will be your opening day starter if he's healthy. And I know I'm really going on a limb there. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> Three hundred twenty-four million dollars okay, on two, it. Two. I'm going to say, hey, you got Corey Kluber. He's a two-time Cy Young. He's got to be your number two starter if he's healthy, right? And so I think. Three, I'll probably go, believe it or not, I, I think I'm going to go Jordan Montgomery mm -hmm. just because uh, Montgomery pitched last year and Tyon didn't. So I'm going to slot Tyon at four in my rotation. Sure. And then five, it's up for grabs. Uh, you want to have Davey Garcia there. You want to have Clark Schmidt. Uh, Domingo Herman is coming back, but he didn't pitch at all in more than a year. So um, I, I think you don't you leave the five wide open. Let Michael King maybe take a crack at it. You know, Nick Nelson, who I mentioned, they, they might get, let him stretch out. Um, so I think five is going to be wide open, but in some order you go Cole, Kluber, Montgomery, and Tyone. If as long as everybody's healthy, and I know that's a big if in Yankee world, it has been the last couple of years. But 
that's where I'd go with it. And, um, and, you know, I like also moving Montgomery up because he's the only lefty you got. There it is. Yep. Now, are the, now are the Yankees, uh, how do they see Davey and Clark Schmidt? Do they see them as a potential 5-4 or are they more regulated to the bullpen? Oh, I, I think they look at both those guys as starters. You know, they, they used them out of – they used um, Clark out of the bullpen, but that wasn't – fair to him and I, I think he's a no <laughs> when, when he came into that game in Baltimore that is, oh. that's actually a fun thing that's in the book um he was telling me I was talking to Clark about the day he got called up and he was up in um I guess Buffalo uh, no he wasn't in Buffalo he was in Scranton and um he's playing video games like 11 30 at night and he hears on his door you know and he thinks it's like hotel security or something. He thinks his video games are too loud. And it turned out to be three of the coaches who were out there and they're like, pack your bags. They need you in Baltimore. That's so, awesome. but, but they're like, or, but you're not on the roster. You're just a taxi squad. The Yankees have a double header the next day. And so he hurries to Baltimore. He gets there. He's not on the roster. He's just kind of chilling. And then I guess the Yankees, uh, whoever started game one got knocked out early and they, they really taxed the bullpen. They had to make a roster move. And so Matt Blake came over and gave Clark maybe about 10 minutes notice. and was like, Hey, get your spikes on, go to the bullpen. Jeez. And so this is it. You've been added to the major league <laughs> roster and he can't even like call his mom and dad. He just had to send him a text and run. And so, and then it was like the sixth or seventh inning. He got called into that game. So it was really just, that kind of sums up the whole year, mm. right? It was just kind of a frenzied kind of, um, you know, <laughs> craziness going on. And yeah, that wasn't a great situation to put him in. So I, I'd like to see Clark uh, and Davey both get a full spring, get yep. built up, go five, six, seven innings, do, do what they do. And um, yeah, just take a crack really at that fifth star, uh, fifth spot in the rotation. Because if, if we know one thing about the Yankees, there's going to be an injury sooner or later, they're going to need a starter. So if there's a real minor league season and we don't even know that for sure, I want both those guys ready to go and, and step in there. I don't really need to see them coming out of the bullpen. They got other guys who can do that. Sure. I mean, I, and you know, I, I just wonder cause the Yankees signed Kluber and right now I'm on board. Like I'm all in, right. I'm that's it. I mean, they signed them. That's it. I have no, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to do anything. But I'm just wondering, like Yankees are really big on, on innings, innings pitch of the previous year, building on that. Like nobody, you know, <laughs> nobody did that. This year, you know? Like there was no, people, yeah, there was people in my DM telling me, "Oh, hey, Joe, you know they signed um, uh, 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 why is he slipping my mind?" That Darren O'Day. O'Day, yeah, that they signed O'Day, and then it was like, "Yeah, but he only pitched nineteen in or sixteen innings last year." I'm like, "It's sixty games. What are we talking? Yeah, about? <laughs> <a> reliever. Nobody <laughs> what are we talking about here." But I mean, aren't the Yankees uh, a bit concerned? How they? How do you think that they're going to manage that with like building innings? Nobody had that. Even Cole. You know, a notorious 200 inning pitcher. Like, what are they going to do here? Right. Right. I think there's going to be a real chain reaction there. And you're going to see guys not be able to go as deep as you want. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, you'd love to say that, sure, Gary Cole is going to get the ball 32 times and everybody's going to keep going through. But the uh, reality is that most of these guys pitched a half season or less. And, you know, in the case of, <laughs> you were talking about four guys in the rotation, four potential guys. We're talking about Kluber, Tyone. Uh, Domingo Herman and Luis Severino eventually they combined for one inning last year one so, <laughs> I, I right. mean so right. the and and they all come September October could be very important to the Yankees so mm -hmm. um, you know I think it's just they're gonna have to get creative and that's why I think guys like Davey Garcia Clark Schmidt Michael King Nick Nelson you, you're gonna have to have these guys ready to go because it might not be a five-man rotation it probably won't be like realistically it's probably gonna be a six seven eight man rotation you're just gonna be bringing guys in taking them out um, all year long and I think all 30 teams are gonna have to do it just because nobody has been built up that way I mean so I think the pitching this year is gonna be kind of a puzzle for every team to get through yeah, I better start getting the good old arm ready. You know, right. so you're it away, Chris here. You know, to the Red Sox, you know, I've got to get that arm ready. Not, 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 I'll not, start not. with the long tossing. I think get on the program <laughs> now. Yeah, break out sixty feet. You go to ninety, and then you know, take it from there. Let's no, go. but That's seriously not. though, last year we saw so many injuries. We saw. I, I can't. I can't think of the number. I remember Joe's putting out the number of how many pitchers were injured in such a short amount of time. And I guess like that could happen again. And now the Yankees are betting on guys that were hurt. And we have right. a, a lot of different possibilities. 
and it's not going to be a 60 game season. It's over the course of 162. I, I think we stand to have one of the most interesting baseball seasons ever. Um, and that's, I mean, that's also why I have so much faith that the Yankees can do it because there's so much parody in baseball. It's very hard to get to the mountaintop every year. You know, we saw the Dodgers win it in, in this 60 game season and we saw them get there in 162, but not be able to, you know, hoist the trophy at the end. Um, how are you thinking about our chances like in 2021? I think, I think right now this bullpen, this uh, rotation is it's not done, but it's pretty much done. And I think, you know, it, it helps us that we have a lot of options just speaking on injuries and stuff like that. But man, looking at our lineup too, um, I just think these guys are ready. You know, we hear DJ LeMay, you talk about, you know, unfinished business and all of us as right. Yankee fans. Have like been, that talk. Yeah, we, we've just, there's, there's a ton of unfinished business. The last time we won the world series was 2009. I mean, think back to where you were in 2009. How are you feeling about our chances in 2021? I think it's our year. I, I always think it's our year, but I really think it can line up to be the Yankees year. I remember where I was in 2009. I still had a little bit of hair then. So it's been a while. <laughs> I was in college, yeah. Me, me too. I had hair too. <laughs> still got yeah, it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for this group, I mean, yeah, there is unfinished business. And you trace it back to 2017 in Houston. And then 2018, Boston. 2019, Houston again. And then last year with Tampa Bay. The one thing I would say is, this was a team going in the last year that we all looked at and said, they're going to be the American league pennant. They're, they're American league favorites. They're going to go to the world series and it'll be Yankees Dodgers. Like pretty much everybody thought that we didn't see Tampa Bay coming that hot, uh, that fast. And um, look, Tampa Bay was, was good. Tampa Bay was the better team. They proved it over a 60 game season. Now, if they played 162, who knows what that was going to look like? Um, you know, maybe that completely goes differently, but what I can tell you is, the two teams that the Yankees played in the postseason, Cleveland and Tampa Bay, they did not get better this offseason. They got worse. And mm -hmm. so the Yankees, look, Toronto got better. Yeah, but Toronto might not be there yet. I, I think the Yankees are going to win this division. I think once you get in the postseason, anything can happen, as we've seen. But, you know, I, I still like this team to, to win the pennant and go to the World Series. They're due. They really are. They should have been there in 2017. Um, they, they, get, they got knocked out by a cheating team. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and then, uh, yeah, I, I see your reaction there and that's probably the same one CC Sabathia still has about that. So yeah, it's tough. yeah 2017 got taken away from them. Um, the, the ball bounced a few different ways in 2020. It probably goes differently. 2019, same story. They're due. They're due. It's their time. Um, yeah, I, I really do believe that as sooner or later, they're going to win a world series, right? They got it. They're the Yankees. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you would think yeah, it has to happen. I'm starting to think like people are talking to me like, man, those guys don't win World Series. Like my son's asking me like, hey, you know, they're kind of like, hey, they never win, daddy. I'm like, see, but we come from a different era. Like we I were we were like, birthed from the era of watching five World Series wins. Like, no, but and, I'm just saying my kids now. I know my son is about don't even believe us. And he's like, they never <laughs> win, daddy. And I'm like. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, it wasn't. Let me tell you about a story back back in the day. It's called right. 2009. When Man, they yeah. moved from an old stadium to a new one. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> right across the street. And then, like, so wait, I got what behind me here in Mission 27. So that was kind of the reason we wrote that 10 years later was mm. because we all thought uh, closing the old stadium, opening a new one, this team, they're going to win another World Series. And then 2010 happens, 2011, 2012. 20, and it's like, wait, maybe they're not going to win another World Series. And I don't think we appreciated 09 in the moment. There was so much going on. But we all kind of expected that they were just going to keep winning more World Series. And then they never got back there. And now, you know, 10 years later, then you look back at 2009. It's like, wow, that was really a special year, more special than we gave it credit mm -hmm. for. Because it's the last time that Jeter, Mariano, Posada, Pettit, those guys were all going to hold the World Series trophy. It's the only time A-Rod was ever going to hold it and guys like Nick Swisher and stuff. And then just kind of going back into that year was so much fun because, yeah, like I said, uh, in the moment, I think we all just said, all right, that's nice. And now go win another one. Or, you know, yeah, well, yeah. all right, we'll be back there again next year. Right. And then right. it didn't happen. A team was so clutch. Uh, I'll always regret uh, not going to the parade, like actually going to class and then going to football oh, wow. practice and not going to the parade. And I literally said to someone, I'll go next year or the year after. Like, well, there'll be another parade, and here we are, 2021. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
That was an unexcused call out of work for me. I <laughs> did go over there to that parade for sure. <laughs> Happy for that. But, Good for you. Uh, when, when you win, you think you're always going to win. Like, yeah. we'll be back here next year. And, mm-hmm. and, and honestly, the Yankees are the last team that could say that, that they, they, you know, we're going to be here next year and we're going to win. Back to the, back. the last team that, you know, consecutively won uh, the championship. Uh, it's a little crazy, man. 11 years, <laughs> 11 years later. We're still talking vivid, you mentioned that parade. I have a very yeah. vivid memory because I went down to City Hall to cover that. And I remember being kind of outside City Hall talking to Jeter. And just kind of just taking a, like a snapshot of that moment in my, we didn't even have iPhones then, I don't think. Like, um, uh, just, you know, thinking like, this is cool. Uh, this will be cool to, to come back here in a year or two when they, when they win it again. And then never made it back to City Hall. I don't even think I've ever been to City Hall since then. So it's crazy. 2012, I thought, I think. Uh, me we neither. Were, we were good in 2012. I thought we were yeah. going to go far in 2012. But this this next World Series is going to be special. Don't bet money on 2012, like... by the way. And they're not going to win. <laughs> 2012, 20, is gonna 2022. Break ankle and it's all going to go bad. And we're oh. just going to we're going to go to Detroit and be like, why are we here? Yeah. <laughs> I remember getting on the plane to go to Detroit. And, that, and I'm bringing back bad memories for Yankee fans. So I'm going to stop in a minute. But, but Derek broke his ankle in that game. And then, like, as, as you're la- watching him laying on the infield, it's like, all right, they're done. Like, they're not going to yeah. come back. Yeah, was, I remember yeah. thinking, like, do I really have to fly to Detroit to watch this team lose? And, of course, that's what happened. <laughs> right. Tigers were stacked. Yeah. That was good the Tigers team. It was. You could hear a pin drop. From my house watching TV, you could hear a pin drop in the stadium when Jeter went there. Yeah, that was tough to watch. And because it's Derek, you know that he's going to always be like, nah, I'm fine, buddy. I want to play. And it, to see him limping off the field, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, that's bad. Yeah. He still so, made the play. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he did. He did you got to do what you got to do. Exactly. And at least we had Raul. Raul Abanez <laughs> had a huge – wow, Yeah. That, that that was one of Girardi's like boldest decisions, by the way. The yeah. fact that you would pinch hit for a rod in the ninth inning of a postseason game, and then it worked out, and he had two homers. <laughs> <to> buy it. <laughs> like, I there's no that. way Joe thought that was gonna happen. Like, maybe he would have thought Abanez get a double or something, but there's no way he was planning on that. Many <laughs> times over, professional yeah. hitter. That was fun. That was fun. I mean, that was I, really fun. It's it's crazy, and you bring up bring up these memories, and it just makes me think, man. Yeah, you gotta gotta kind of go out there and win another one. Like that would be nice. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it, it's just it's crazy. And I know you get access to a lot of the different players and things like that. And you probably see a side of them that none of us get to see because I feel like the Yankees are so guarded, more guarded than probably other organizations. Maybe they're instructed to be so. I, I don't know. Unless you're, you know, Clint Frazier, then I don't know. <laughs> no, but <laughs> But what's what's a guy in I guess uh, other than Brett Gardner because we hear that he's playing tricks on everybody. But what's yeah. a guy in the clubhouse that's like, you know, you wouldn't expect to be kind of like a goofball. I know some people were talking about even Tanaka was a guy that was like really playing around with a lot of people, uh, and that's why he'll be missed. But who's another guy that likes to like really play around with a lot of people and probably I don't want to say like Gardner, but that same kind of uh, cut of that cloth, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Gardy is the prankster he's been for a while. He's, he's a wise ass there. But, you know, who was actually big this past year, and I get into it in the Bronx Zoom, was Eric Kratz. Like, Kratzy was big in that clubhouse just as far as, you know, talking trash, giving guys the, the business there, making sure everybody stays loose. Like, they did a thing on the bus, and I don't think anybody's reported this, and I haven't said it anywhere else, so you're going to get it first. Um, <laughs> so they – Eric. They called, yeah, they, they would get on the bus from the hotel to the ballpark when they're on the road, and the guys would start, you know, banging their um, wrists or their forearms on the, the rack, like the luggage rack of the bus, mm-hmm. and they would kind of start up the beat. And the reason was because they wanted Kratz to get on the microphone, like the PA of the bus, and just start <laughs> roasting people. He was like their Jeffrey Ross, just, the, you know, kind of whoever was in his line of sight, whoever he'd see, he was just ripping on whether it was like, you know, somebody's shirt or somebody, you know, messed something up in the game last night or somebody was late for BP, like whatever it was, like Kratz would lay into you. And so I think he like clubhouse wise, he was a big part of that team. Um, and I, you know, I've just heard that so many guys loved having him on that team and he was just kind of happy to be there. And mm-hmm. so backup catchers are always the fun ones, right? I guess. Um <laughs> <laughs> like you go back in history, uh, I loved Romine. I thought Austin Romine was an awesome dude. I loved having him around, and so 
Um, yeah, backup catchers have a lot of fun. They're usually good dudes. Dope. Love that. Yeah, I think I heard Michael King say on Talking Yanks that Eric Kratz was always giving him a hard time and roasting him. And I think Believe he said it. he had more more major league innings pitched than him. <laughs> <laughs> Not good ones necessarily, but yeah. I'll miss that knuckleball. I don't know who the next position player will be, who they have to call in. Hopefully they don't have hopefully we don't have to see too many 14 to two games where Kratz has to come in and pitch. But yeah, no. um, yeah. Right. we enjoyed was it. fun the first. The knuckleball was fun the first time that he came in at Fenway. Um, I think it was Fenway or whatever the first one is. And then the second one, it was at Fenway. And then the second one was in Buffalo. And that one wasn't as fun. It was kind of because it was like twice in a week. And it was like, <laughs> all right, I've seen this already. I've seen this show. I don't need I to see it again. No, nothing was fun in Buffalo for the, for the game. No, they're not. And I heard that the Blue Jays aren't going to play there like this sure. year. Like, they're so they're, they're going to start the season in Dunedin, I guess. Which yeah. is down here in Tampa, this area. It's like okay, right. <laughs> weird, but yeah. so figure it out. Uh, That's where the Raptors are, the yeah. basketball team. Yeah, but they're playing inside, it's right? Yeah. They're training every five minutes. You know, you got to figure that out. Yeah, um, it's gonna be tough. That's yeah, gonna be tough. I guess the last thing I'll ask you is, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a big content guy, and I just love it when people come out with just different content, even out of their own norm. And then it's, it makes me smile when I see your, uh, you know, you, you put up your videos of your daughter and she got <laughs> pennies, two cents. And, you know, I watch it, you know, it's whatever. Like I watch everything. Like, oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Read it's awesome. It. But then when my son <laughs> seen it and he was just like, Oh, play it again. And then he's like, Oh, is she talking about the Yankees? Like he was like, so, into it <laughs> what about our conversations and, you know. <laughs> so that was uh that, that's pretty cool and I, I just wanted to know like how that started how'd you get to do that i know you said i think you told me before that it's really your wife that kind of oh yeah created the whole thing so tell me a little bit yeah more. i'm just the front man man i'm just the, <laughs> i'm just a beautiful face out front guys like <laughs> um yeah no connie's doing all that like she is a visionary with that stuff and so um yeah, no, that was something she uh, Penny has started to show interest in the Yankees. And, and this is probably the first year where um, she really kind of started to get baseball. She's four years old. So mm -hmm. she's learning the game and we're kind of teaching it to her as this goes along. And um, so it's been a lot of fun to kind of shoot that. She's a natural on camera. She has fun with it. Um, you know, she's just got that. She's redhead. She's got that personality where she just <laughs> wants to be very outgoing. And, um, you know, in this 2020 year where there was so much kind of dark and just not fun. Mm -hmm. um, that was one way that we kind of just had fun with it. And it was like, you know, yeah, this season is completely backwards, but you know, here's a cute kid and here she's <laughs> excited about the Yankees and like judge is her favorite player. And let's let her talk about it a little bit on camera. And so, um, yeah, that was, uh, she actually thinks that I'm Brett Gardner though. Like that's the one thing Like when she watches on TV and Gardy's like in the dugout, she's like, look, it's daddy. And it's like, she thinks I play for the Yankees and I don't really want to tell her differently. So, you know, she, you know, Gardy will get a hit and he's on second base. And she's like, look, daddy got it. Daddy's on TV again. Like, All right, cool. I'm good with that. Like, whole life. I'm not going to, I'm not going to ruin that for her. So in, in a way, in a way, Brian, you, you like, Hoping that the Yankees resign on <laughs> Gordy, <you>, right? <laughs> well, I don't want my career to end. <laughs> I'm living vicariously <laughs> through Gardy. Um, right. Yeah, I, I, but I do think Gardy will be back. I think awesome. that uh, it, so much of what he said late in the year, um, just in terms of not wanting his last games to be in an empty ballpark mm -hmm. and uh, never wanting to wear another uniform. I, like it, it, Maybe he won't play next year, but I think Gardy wants to play. And so if he plays, I think it's going to be for the Yankees. Okay. I don't. I don't sense that Brett wants to go finish his career with one random year in Kansas City or something. Like, <laughs> what's the point of that? Yeah, you have a. You, you think that the Yankees are other than Gardner? Because uh, that's that to me almost feels like predetermined. You think that it's that the Yankees are kind of done, or you think that there's some other stuff that they may have up their sleeve? For the I think smaller stuff, kind of like the Darren O'Day move. Um, you know, I expect that there's going to be somebody new who comes in the bullpen. You know, Trevor Rosenthal is a name that we keep yeah. hearing about. And, you know, if they can fit that money-wise in, then 
Uh, maybe that's something they do. Um, you know, we've just been, but at this, look, they're not going to go out and spend on Trevor Bauer. Like I think <laughs> the, the big pieces are in place right now and whatever you can do to kind of upgrade on the, the edges there. But you hear so many people talk, in the organization talking about this young pitching coming up. And I do think they'll, they'll give a lot of those guys a chance rather than bring in, um, you know, guys who have been around the block and stuff. And, you know, a guy like O'Day, for example, he's 38 years old. Yeah. He's tough on right-handed hitters, but it's taken away an opportunity from some other guys who uh, mm -hmm. may might be able to be better. So who knows? Uh, but, you know, as we've talked about earlier, this year is going to be a game of attrition with this, uh, with pitching, like guys are going to go down, not just the Yankees, like guys around the league are going to go down and you're going to have to have that kind of next wave to step up and step in. Right. Next man up. Have you heard that one before? <laughs> Somewhere. I don't know. Couple Not really, no. Uh, hmm, I remember. <laughs> First time. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of the next man up there. I remember a year. It was 2019. Yeah. We I'm didn't tired. have to wear masks to go to the grocery <laughs> store. It was a wonderful time, kids. A wonderful time. I, I'm tired of the, the next man up thing. I, I want these yeah, guys I hear to, you. To, to Yeah, do. these guys up, please. All right, let's see the first man up. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, next man up. This guy's a, a, a way... You know, he's, he's far away right now, 17 years old. Phenom, Jason Mingas. Now, all the videos that we've seen is, you know, him swinging the bat. Any visuals of him playing defense, you know, catch or whatever. <laughs> anything. I haven't seen much. I mean, yeah. I've heard the comparisons to Mike Trout and Mickey right. Mantle and, like, you know, no pressure, right? But, right. <laughs> um, but the man, the, the hitting, I could watch that all day. I right. mean, he's destroying batting practice pitching, which is, you know – it's kind of like when I'm back a hundred years ago when we were allowed on the field and I could be near, near the cage and watch judge and Stanton mm -hmm. go through their rounds. And it was just, boom, boom, boom. It was awesome to, it's just like, that, how can they do that? And obviously it's a lot harder when you've got a guy on the mound throwing 95 with nasty sliders trying to get you out and stuff. But um, look, Dominguez looks great. I'd love to see him in spring training. I don't know if he's going to be, he probably won't be in big league camp, but I hope he's around at some point. Right. We can actually get to see him play in like a single leg game or something. But um, yeah, I was looking him up the other day and it said like ETA 2024. And I'm like, okay, that's because he's 17, but right. like that guy doesn't look 17 to me. And like <laughs> put him in 2022. Like let's, right. let's see him next year. Like right. just fast track that guy. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, because by the time that he comes up, Stan's going to be the DH. I need him to do a little bit more than just bat, right? So uh, <laughs> Stan's going to be the DH this year. <laughs> so, right, exactly. So it's like, I need to do a little bit I more. I mean, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I wonder, I do wonder how much outfield Giancarlo is going to play even in right. spring training. Like, I, I think that they're so afraid that he's going to get hurt again. And they know, yeah. you saw him in the postseason. When he's right, he can carry that team. So yeah. how do you keep that guy in the, in the lineup for 500 bats? Like, exactly. I guess – Guess he can't play the field anymore. I don't know. Right. Oh, well, he could run in between. He's not that old, right? <laughs> no. He just turned no. thirty. No, no, it's <laughs> not like we're 31. talking about you know a thirty, like uh, you know a Ruel Abanez, like oh. I mentioned earlier here, like who was forty then, which is crazy. <laughs> or a Rod at the end, like Stanton should have a lot of good years left, but they're they're so afraid of him getting hurt that, and plus, you know, a guy like Clint Frazier needs those reps in left field. Like he needs an opportunity anyway. That is true. All right, I got to get my uh, my story <laughs> in. Can you see the pick? Can you see that? I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> I look really faded and washed out. <laughs> That was a rough trip for me. Yeah, yeah I'm going to ask you about the trip after I tell my story. So Okay, go ahead. I think it was game two in London, London series. And uh, I happened to just be walking around. And the great thing about London, I mean, there were so many great things. And I, I'll ask you what your favorite thing about London was in a second. But, you know, that stadium was not a baseball stadium. It was a soccer stadium no. with a baseball field in it. And it was an interesting walk through even the stands and the to, you know, the concourse or it wasn't a concourse. I don't know what they called it, you know, where, the, you know, snacks were and where the bathrooms were. And uh, I go into the bathroom and I'm like, oh, shit, that's Brian Hope. <laughs> and, uh, I get that a lot in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, so like, Usually it's people running in the other direction. <laughs> so no, I better get out of here. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself. Okay, this is super awkward to like introduce yourself in the bathroom, but 
<laughs> I might not ever get the opportunity again. So I kind of gave you, I think I gave you like a wave or a tap, like, like, Hey Brian. And I knew you didn't know who I was, but Brian was nice enough to wash his hands, come out <laughs> and take a picture with me. And it made my day. I ended up telling my fiance right away. And, uh, you know, before we came on tonight, I'm like, remember in London when I ran back to the seat and I showed you the picture and I was like, you know, I've been following this guy's work for years. Like, you know, uh, what, are, what are the chances I meet him in London in the bathroom at game two of the London series? And he's taking a leak at the urinal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else would he be doing? Right. In there? Do you well, remember yeah. how hot it was in London? Like it Heat was wave. steamy hot. Heat and wave I, and that takes me back to why I was in the bathroom because they had, <laughs> uh, well, let me tell a real story about that. No, because we were all dehydrated. <laughs> like it was so hot in that ballpark. It was steamy. It was like 95 degrees. And they, they gave us all just bottle after bottle of Aquafina. So I was going there like every two or three innings. <laughs> like we were just we were just trying to pound water that whole time. And it, like the field was artificial turf. So it was hot as hell down there. It was like 110 on the field. And, you know, there's a reason why there were like 700 runs scored in those two games. Right. Wild, man. It was yeah, a it was wild fun. experience. No, it was great. Speaking of Tanaka and Porcello, that was a rough <laughs> go for them. Uh, that was that was rough out there for them because. I could imagine how how bad it was, like being on the field and then seeing Pumped the pockets. Tanaka pitched the- Tanaka pitched the first game. First game, yeah. And speaking yeah. of speaking of the bathroom again, we come out and I think I think the Yankees <laughs> scored like two runs. We we had the lead, and I go to the bathroom, and typical me, you know, I'm I'm talking trash to the Red Sox fans, like, oh, you came all the way to London, you wasted your money on this trip, you guys are gonna get swept, which they did. Um, <laughs> But I'm like, this is going to be no fun for you. You're not going to have any fun here. And then I hear the stadium roar. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, wait, like Tanaka starts giving it up. I'm like, I got to get back to my right. seat. Right. Yeah. Crazy. Man, that was just arena baseball. Like, I don't even count that as <laughs> arena like, the baseball. real thing. 50 runs. Like, you would, baseball, yeah. Because that, that field was so fast, too. If you hit a ground ball at second base, it was getting through. Like, it was, everything was just supercharged. And so – um, yeah, it's hard to hard to defend on that. If you weren't striking guys out, they were getting on base. I think the Yankees yeah. should bring back the black uni- the all black uniforms. Players don't, weekend. Don't do it when it's 110 yeah. degrees. <laughs> exactly. That was the worst. <laughs> we were I hate those. I really didn't hate them. Like, yeah. and the jerseys were cool. Um, yeah, I don't know about the black pants. You could probably get rid of those, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But the black jerseys mm-hmm. with New York across the front, like, they look dope. Maybe it's time to to throw in an alternate here because. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know all about tradition and, and all that, but let's change it up. It's not like they've never worn them, right? So, like at this point, what are we hanging on to? Mm-hmm. Um, Those you know, they, jerseys, they wear the ones, the, the pink ones for Mother's Day and the military ones Father's for Day. Memorial Day and stuff. And it's like, it's not like the Yankees, you know, stopped the clock with Babe Ruth and they've never worn any other uniforms. It's like, well, they're they're wearing different stuff all the time. So let's right. mix it up a little bit. Let's have fun with it. Those jerseys got killed by the internet. I they say. never they never had a chance because when MLB put them out there, everyone crushed them in the replies and the Where's comments. The like, yeah, like these are terrible. And then it was Yankees Dodgers, two of the most iconic uniforms. Uh, were right. you in L.A. for, for that Players yeah. Weekend series? So once we, like once I was I, there, yeah, once we got out there and I saw the team in them, I'm like, these are sweet. It gave us kind of like a Darth Vader, like evil, them. evil empire feel. <laughs> But they mm-hmm. killed them online before they even had a chance. Yeah, I wish that because I think they wore them that whole weekend, right? If I yeah. remember right, mm-hmm. um, yeah. it wasn't just one. I wish they would have thrown in one day where right. we could have seen like the Thunder, you know the Thunder. Dodgers classic against the like 1977 World Series. Here's Reggie Jackson like that uniform mm-hmm. again. Yeah. But um, so that, that would have been good if they threw in one day with the the stuff. But the players really did like those, and so um, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked to see. Probably not this year, but hey, now that Nike's making the uniforms anyway, maybe they'll just mix everything up. Oh, that'd be dope. I mean, people will lose anymore. their minds. They already lost their minds over a swoosh <laughs> over the <laughs> pinstripe. <laughs> swoosh, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it was here instead of here on the sleeve, right? Yeah. Okay, it's all <laughs> oh, well. Okay. I don't really mind. That, that, remember the days when that was the biggest problem 2020 was going to bring us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do well, remember. It was a Nike swoosh on the sleeve and the Astros cheated. Yeah. Jesus. The good Remember times. those days? The good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those are good. Man, they, de- they definitely escape scrutiny uh, for sure. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. In spring training, like, they were already getting booed down here. They, they were yeah. 
um, in West Palm and stuff. And you know, spring training crowds are really nice. It's people trying to catch some sun and you know, wearing sunscreen, have a beer and a hot dog. And the fact that they were getting booed by 5,000 people, like loud, I was like, I can't wait to see what this is going to be at Yankee Stadium when they got 45,000 uh, and Houston comes in and we never get to see it. So. Oh, well, we will. We, we, we haven't uh, forgotten. People won't forget. People won't forget. <laughs> Never we'll forget. get that chance. <laughs> I, I hope make. it happens. And some of the 2017 Astros are still there by then. <laughs> whenever, <laughs> yeah. whenever we actually do get to see it. Right. He yeah. start booing some kids that never been there. Like, what? what? Right. It's like, what do you want from me? I was in a ball then. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah. I was. I was in high school. <laughs> Just boo Jim Crane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we definitely want to thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you coming on here, and I can't wait to get that book. The you know with Zoom and everything like that. Brian Hoke, everybody, appreciate it. Showing Pinstripe Strong some love. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. You got it. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. Thank you.